is the Chinese digital currency set to dethrone the dollar? I think over the long term, the answer may be yes. So sit down, buckle up, pour yourself that stiff drink, because this is a video you are definitely going to want to watch all the way to the end. Let's dive right into it. As always, I'm going to explain this to you in three simple, fast steps. Step number one, let's go over why central bank digital currencies matter. More specifically, China's central bank digital currency, the digital one, they're calling DCEP. And I want to be very clear, this is not speculation. This is not tinfoil hat stuff. This is already in the works. It's been in the news for several months. So how would this work? First, the individuals using the digital currency, businesses and the average Joe would download the app. This automatically gives them a bank account with the central bank. In this case, they'd have access directly to digital yuan, bank reserves. The central bank would just print up out of nowhere and turn into legal tender. They wouldn't have to issue bonds at all. We'd go straight to MMT. This means seamless lending. The central bank could lend directly to the business and the consumer. Not just lend, but basically give them money <laughs> as well. The currency could expand with demand for productive uses. More on that in just a moment. This is key because one of the features of something like Bitcoin or gold is that it's scarce to a certain degree. Some people, a lot of Keynesians, would see that as a bug, not a feature. So from the standpoint of the central banks, if they have a currency that can expand, that's elastic, that in the end is going to win. Their words, not mine. So moving on, it's very efficient. It's very much like Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency without the benefit of scarcity and decentralization. There's really easy storage. It's not like gold where you have to put it somewhere physical. It's not even like Bitcoin. You wouldn't even really need a key. And it's much easier than carrying cash around with you. The accounting, it's very seamless. We could rehypothecate it. You could repledge collateral used against this digital one or DCEP. And payments just as easy as Bitcoin. Cross-border from peer-to-peer, -peer, business to consumer, or consumer to business. And it really wouldn't matter what country they're in. And this is a big key that I think nobody is talking about and everyone is really missing. We get hyper-focused on what if the Fed had their own digital currency? What would that mean for Americans? But we forget that the central bank could allow anybody to download the app and start using their digital currency. So in this case, the PBOC, the People's Bank of China, could encourage everyone they do business with in other countries, such as Africa, to download the app and start using the digital wand. But the main point I want to emphasize is this completely eliminates the need for banks. That's huge, absolutely crucial point. We'll discuss more in step number two. And I want to point out the fact that the central banks don't have a P&L. So they can issue loans without having to worry about being paid back. And they could create limitless currency units as long as there was productive uses for those loans. It would be straight MMT. But in this case, it could be global MMT coming directly from the People's Bank of China. Oh, time out. Just to make sure you're following along with what I'm talking about with this limitless currency creation, productive loans, MMT. Let's think about this through the lens of the central bank's balance sheet. They have assets and liabilities. On the liability side, they just create bank reserves. In this case, they would be digital yuan. And this goes out to all the individuals. Now, again, these could be loans, these could be grants, these could be stimulus checks, who knows? And this would simply be done by them going over to their computers typing in some additional numbers and creating more bank reserves, more liabilities. 
they would probably back that up with issuing some form of debt against those liabilities. So if they were giving loans to corporations, as an example, those loans would then be assets on their balance sheet. But in practice, they wouldn't even have to do that. In fact, they could have all liabilities and no assets whatsoever. Because they're a central bank, they're not restricted by profit and loss, nor are they restricted by having to have positive equity. They could be completely insolvent. It wouldn't matter. They could continue to churn out, print, whatever you want to call it, create more of these digital currency units. So let's go through how this works to make sure we're all on the same page. We've got the central bank, the PBOC, right here, and it issues currency units directly to its citizens and its businesses in the form of loans, maybe grants, stimulus, who knows? So who is this fine looking gentleman right here? You may ask, is that the average Joe? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> it is the average Joe's Chinese cousin, China Cho. And here is his African cousin, not average Joe, but Africa Yo. So Africa Yo and China Cho download their app. Now, Africa Yo isn't in China. Let's say he's down in Tanzania. And Africa Corp is down, let's say, in Nigeria. China Corp, let's say somewhere in Beijing. So they could download this app, they could get stimulus checks, they could get loans directly from the People's Bank of China. Doesn't matter what country they're in anymore. This is really something where the network effect could apply and give China a huge, huge edge, especially because they already have a massive presence in South America and in Africa. More on that in step number three. And again, the key I want to point out is this completely gets around the banking system. Before, if Africa Yo needed a loan or Africa Corp, they'd have to go through a bank. But now they go directly to the Chinese central bank. And once they have their digital yuan, then they can transact with one another seamlessly just like any other cryptocurrency. They'd have the app on their phone. They could transfer money to the corporation, to the business. The business could transfer money to its employees. Africa Yo could transfer money directly to China Cho in China. It would be extremely efficient. It would have the same efficiencies of Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency. And this, among many other reasons, is why China could take over the world, not with their military, but with their digital currency. Step number two, problems with the current dollar, euro dollar system. And it's very important you get your mind around this so you can determine the probabilities of the Chinese digital yuan replacing the dollar as the global reserve currency. Let's dive right in. The way this works currently is the Fed is seen as the center of the dollar monetary system. That's not really true. It's actually banks outside of the United States that create dollar loans. In other words, they can create dollar deposits or dollar liabilities in the commercial banking system. So let's say we've got a South American bank and an African bank. They can lend dollars between each other. They can create derivatives out of dollars. They can also create dollar denominated loans to Corporation XYZ in South America or Corporation ABC in Africa. Where we start to run into issues is when this entire system breaks down like it did in 2008. If you go back and listen to my interviews with Jeff Snyder or any of his interviews on Making Sense, his own podcast, or Macro Voices, he walks us through this very, very well. And the Cerveza sickness has given us a perfect example of how this system can be extremely inefficient. If the banks decide not to lend, they want to tighten lending standards because they're really worried about a global pandemic. Of course, they don't want to lend out any money because they know they most likely won't be paid back. 
It all goes back to the commercial banks having to be concerned with a P&L, profit and loss. And you say, well, of course, George, they're a business. Of course, they're concerned with a P&L. But let's keep in mind the central banks like the PBOC are not worried about a balance sheet. They're not worried about a P&L. They can lend money. They can create additional currency units even if they know they're not going to be paid back. That is a huge, huge difference. So if the dollar monetary system or the euro dollar system freezes up and these entities can't get the liquidity in dollars they need, the Fed has to come in and set up these swap lines. But the swap lines are extremely inefficient because all they do is give additional dollars to the commercial banks. <laughs> but we're still reliant on the commercial banks to issue loans to entities that they see as insolvent or at the very least having a cash flow problem. So even if they have access to dollars through the Fed's swap lines, those dollars still aren't getting to the corporations like they would in the United States where the Fed can set up a special purpose vehicle and just go ahead and buy the junk debt or the corporate debt of corporation one, two, three. So if you're one of these corporations, which system would you choose in the future? The system that's broken, that's flawed, if we have a disaster or a pandemic, you're not gonna be able to get the funding you need? Or are you gonna choose a system that goes directly to the Central Bank of China? So these corporations have the app on their phone, just like China Cho and Africa Yo. And the PBOC can give them a loan. They can give them the liquidity they need to weather the storm. It completely cuts out the banking system and it goes to a balance sheet that is limitless, that can take any amount of loss it needs to prop up the system. For more insight, let's go right to the internet and check out a recent article from Forbes. This is an article titled, China will use its digital currency to compete with the US dollar. A digital version of the renminbi lets China interoperate between different currency contexts where the US dollar may start to fade. For an example, central banks that don't have established swap lines, I would argue countries that even do have swap lines, with the Federal Reserve for USD during this COVID crisis may see a spat of debt demand for USD within each of their markets, heightening the value of the USD in the short term, but probably determining a long-term reckoning on US dollar denominated debts. In other words, in the future, they're gonna to wanna to try to diversify out of the dollar because the problems they're having right now with the swap lines. The author also makes a great point about inflation. Across the African continent, inflation has been at all-time highs. And obviously, there's a lot of inflation historically in South America as well. A digital currency that can interoperate between different African systems and South American systems or other Belt and Road Initiative partners, as well as what may be their largest trading partner, China, backed by some government force, may be able to sweep the area as people question the value of holding US dollar debts amid collapsing domestic currencies. So in a crisis, these countries are left with a very difficult choice, either allow these businesses to go bust or create hyperinflation because they can't get the dollars they need, so they have to print more of their own currency units. Not a very good choice to have to make. But we're talking about it at a corporate level in a country or continent level, but it also goes down to the individuals like China Cho and Africa Yo. Let's think about this. Do they want to hold their local currency that's prone to having the value destroyed by inflation? And do they want cheap loans? Let's not forget about that. If they downloaded the Central Bank of China's app, they could get yuan denominated loans. Therefore, the interest rate would be far lower than in their local currency. So this checks a lot of boxes for the individuals as well as the corporations. 
And at the end of the day, let's also remember that the balance sheet of the PBOC is limitless. They can extend however many loans they want to these individuals. They can give them stimulus checks. Who knows? They can give them UBI. But going back to the loans, they could have a competitive edge on other cryptocurrencies, even Bitcoin, because they could issue those loans at a far lower interest rate because they don't have to worry about being paid back. It's a completely perverse system, I know, but we have to think through the realities to determine the probabilities of the Chinese digital currency taking over the world and replacing the dollar. Step number three, how China takes over the world with their digital currency, the DCEP or the digital yuan. And in case you are wondering, now is definitely stiff drink time. It starts with young demographics in places the PBOC is targeting with foreign direct investment and they'll most likely be targeting with the digital yuan. This is Africa and South America. This creates a network effect because young people adopt it and use it and they don't want to use anything else. We've seen this with Facebook, Amazon, Google, and several other tech companies. It'd be the exact same way with the digital currency. Also, easy access to cheap credit. This is huge and will facilitate massive adoption. It cuts out the banking system. You can go directly to the central bank that has an unlimited balance sheet. The currency is stable. No longer do these countries have to deal with the concern of hyperinflation over and over and over again. The ease of use of a cryptocurrency with payments, storage, and accounting. This takes out the banking system and having to get those loans like we discussed earlier. But if you really take this to its logical conclusion, this system could replace the entire euro dollar system we have today. In other words, it could replace the global monetary system we've had in place since 1944 and Bretton Woods. And it's not just me saying this. There are a lot of guys out there talking about this that are a heck of a lot smarter than I am. As an example, let's go to a clip from a recent podcast episode, one of my favorites, The End Game, with Grant Williams, Bill Fleckenstein, and James Atkin. Really what we're sketching out here is a profound change, or to begin with, a, a really intense competition between who run, uh, around who runs the financial system of the future. Are we going to have a dollar-backed financial system as we knew it, or are we going to have a digital Remnimbi-backed financial system with, quite frankly, all of the horrible problems that will entail? That's what this is about. So to be clear, very tricky to trade. I mean, really tricky to trade. Yeah. But we all have to be aware of what's happening as market participants. We need to keep an eye on it. I, for one, have set up all these alerts on DCEP on my Bloomberg, so I get all these headlines, and I'm getting 25 a day. I mean, you know, they've now got the trial running in Shanghai for DCEP. Now they're rushing it out in other parts of China. You know, they're going for it. Yeah. Right? They're going for it because, frankly, up until very recently, Washington has been asleep at the switch. But it's, it's extraordinary to watch the, I mean, no surprise about Xi Jinping's breathtaking ambition on so many fronts. Yeah. But this one, for us, for those of us working in financial markets and think about asset allocation and everything else, I mean, I don't know about you fellas, but I don't particularly fancy opening a digital Remnimbi wallet in mainland China, given the data I would have to hand over. Yeah. And that's just yeah. for starters, right? Yeah. Assuming, of course, that was the only way I could do any transactions in mainland China. To be clear, I don't, but, you know, these, yeah, these yeah. are, to me, is a really 
important, difficult, complicated topic, but it's the biggest plumbing question I've been confronted with in my career. So let's review this quickly to get our heads around this network effect. The PBOC launches their digital currency, the DCEP. All of the average Joes in South America and Africa download it onto their phone. They have very young demographics, so the kids download it to their phones, go back and forth because of the ease of use and easy access to credit. So we have Africa Yo downloading it to their phones. And over here, we have this guy. Is it the average Joe? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> it's his South American cousin, South America Ho. That's right, because the J is pronounced as an H in Espanol. <laughs> so South America Ho and Africa Yo they're all downloading it onto their phones. They're using the digital wand going back and forth. They're using it for payments to the corporations. The corporations are borrowing money in the currency from the PBOC. This is what creates this network effect. And we haven't even talked about foreign direct investment yet. That is another huge key component. For more on the One Belt, One Road program and this foreign direct investment, let's go right to the internet. Pegged as the most ambitious infrastructure mega project of all time, China's One Belt, One Road initiative will stretch from the very edge of East Asia to East Africa, Central Europe, connecting nearly two thirds of the world's population. Through continuous networks of highways, railways, ocean routes, and ports, the scheme will open up cross-border connectivity and encourage further integration of international markets. Aside from kickstarting economic growth across China and many developing nations, many have questioned the true political intentions behind Beijing's master plan, fearing potential renminbi internationalization. And that's where the digital currency comes in. Whatever happens with the one trillion worth of infrastructure works planned, and I would say it's going to be a lot more than one trillion, we're already underway. One Belt, One Road will transform the Eurasian landmass and reshape global trade as we know it. How China will fund the works still remains to be seen. And this is where I think it gets really interesting. What the author, whomever wrote this, didn't understand is MMT. Now that we realize how popular MMT is and how it's being adopted by governments and the central banks, they're not worried about issuing bonds. All they need to do is create the bank reserves out of thin air and use those bank reserves as legal tender by sending the digital currency units or bank reserves themselves to the individual's phones in Africa, South America, India, Russia, or wherever else they're instituting this one belt, one road plan. And there you go. You don't need to issue bonds. You don't need debt. You just create the currency units out of thin air. MMT for the globe. Some more data and maps I found relevant that really give us insight as to how quickly this Chinese digital currency could be adopted. When we look at Africa, and these are actually old maps, I think the extent of the foreign direct investment of the Chinese is far greater now. But we can see in areas like Zambia, Nigeria, Tanzania, Ethiopia, Zimbabwe, South Africa, they're investing heavily in infrastructure and in energy. Look at how many Chinese workers are in Africa as of 2016. Obviously, they would immediately adopt and start transacting in the Chinese digital currency. Even in South America, the Chinese have been investing heavily. And I think there's a lot more foreign direct investment than what we see here. This is old data. But I know from personal experience, when I was in Ecuador, in Quito and Guayaquil, their two main cities, Chinese folks were everywhere and they weren't there just living. They were there investing, building companies, infrastructure 
in controlling resources. So huge amounts of foreign direct investment is going to rapidly increase the rate of adoption for the Chinese digital currency and this network effect that we were referring to earlier. And just on a side note, I want to point out that everything that China is doing with this initiative in Africa, South America, India, Russia, the Middle East, and the Eastern part of Europe is going to potentially increase the amount of goods and services. And as you guys know from watching my videos, the wealth of a society isn't necessarily how many currency units it has, but how many goods and services it can produce efficiently. This system has the potential. Now, whether they will accomplish it or not is yet to be seen, but they're moving in the direction of creating vastly more wealth for these developing countries. While on the other hand, we have the United States, Western Europe, Australia, and New Zealand that are adopting the policies of Klaus, Bigglesworth, the World Economic Forum, and the IMF with their Great Reset Agenda. They are pushing for equality of outcome, not equality of opportunity. They want to eliminate all private property. Remember, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. And they want the average male to have the same testosterone levels as a 10-year-old girl, which creates an economic environment with less output, therefore fewer goods and services, making these societies much poorer, while these societies are getting far richer. I also want to point out that what gives the dollar the world reserve status isn't the fact that it's just a green piece of paper. It's the infrastructure for the global monetary system or the global dollar monetary system. That's what gives it its power and its staying power. But this process that we've outlined in step three is completely replacing the old infrastructure with a new infrastructure the Chinese and the People's Bank of China would control completely. If they control the infrastructure, if everyone is using it, by definition, they would have the global reserve currency. And it's not about military power these days. I know a lot of people are saying, well, the United States would never let that happen because they have the world's largest military. But if you control the infrastructure, if you control the monetary system, that's far greater power than having a big military. You can use sanctions. You can cut off these countries and basically get them to do whatever it is you want. And let's also not forget that the main supplier to the United States military is who? China. And I know a lot of people right now, especially the Bitcoin troll guys <laughs> that we talked about in a video a few weeks ago, are pulling out their hair saying, George, what you're talking about is Bitcoin. It has the efficiencies. It has the network effect. The People's Bank of China, their currency, it's not going to take over. It's going to be Bitcoin that's going to win. And I hope so. I hope you're right, Bitcoin troll guy. But what you need to remember is the edge the Chinese currency has, and that's they can extend credit very inexpensively because they have an infinite balance sheet. They don't have to worry about profit and loss. And Bitcoin's greatest feature is potentially its greatest bug, and that's the fact that it can't expand. There's not much elasticity to a currency that is extremely scarce and only has 21 million units, no matter how divisible it may be. So I'm not saying that Bitcoin won't win. I definitely prefer a decentralized system to this type of tops down approach any day of the week. I hate central planning. And this, from an Orwellian standpoint, definitely keeps me up at night. But I am saying that Bitcoin and other central bank digital currencies are going to have their hands full 
competing with the DCEP. And I know the rest of you are probably saying to yourself, George, what about the United States dollar? What about the Fed creating their own digital currency? Isn't that an easier sell for the entire world because we're already on a dollar denominated system? And I would say, yes, the dollar, the Fed, and the United States can definitely compete with China, but I'd also point out the fact that they are way, way behind with these digital currencies. I'd also like to point out the fact that the closer the United States comes to competing with China, the closer they take all Americans to 1984 in a total state of surveillance. For more content that'll help you build wealth and thrive in a world of out of control central banks and big governments, check out this playlist right here and I will see you on the next video.